circulatory assessment or circulation now what am i supposed to do in circulation i have ensured his airway is fine or i have secured an airway i have ensured his breathing is fine all right i have done the examination any breathing problem i have tackled it now i come to circulation mind you it's not that airway breathing takes forever it has to be done quickly whatever problems are there have to be solved within minutes i have to read circulation asap sometimes one person is assessing airway one person is assessing breathing one person is assessing circulation there is a trauma team each person has a designated task to make things more efficient all right now what do i do in circulation i check his vitals vitals means pulse blood pressure oxygen saturation i check his vitals neck veins and then what i do is depending on the severity of derangement how much tachycardia how much hypotension is there i am supposed to take two large bore iv lines and a large bore iv line typically should be a green iv or a gray iv green is 18 gauge gray is 16 gauge whichever is possible the wider the better i take two large bore iv lines and depending on the severity of hypovolemia I will give him IV fluid bolus. All right, I will give him IV fluid bolus. Now, which IV fluids and how much? What ATLS manual says is, according to ATLS manual, you are supposed to give warm crystalloids. You are supposed to give warm crystalloids one liter. All right, one liter of warm crystalloids. The earlier ATLS said 1.5 to 2 liters, but now the principle has become limited crystalloid use. All right, you give up to one liter of IV fluid bolus depending on the severity of hypovolemia. If I am expecting or if I am anticipating profound blood loss, if I am anticipating profound blood loss, like the person has had major road traffic accident, his pulse is very high, blood pressure is very low, he may require too much resuscitation. In that case, I would prefer blood and blood products. I will use blood and blood products and what I am going to use, this is also called as massive transfusion protocol which applies to bleeding and trauma also but it applies to other bleeds not just trauma. I go for massive transfusion protocol where I am going to give him packed RBCs, is to FFP, is to platelet in the ratio 1 is to 1 is to 1. This is going to be done if I am anticipating profound hypovolemia. This is one of the components of damage control resuscitation which we will discuss in detail in damage control. But mind you, this is not necessary to be done in every patient of trauma. This is when I am suspecting profound hemorrhage. So that is circulation and there is something new which has come that is in some patients so they did a trial called CRASH2 trial where they found that the mortality will reduce so there is a reduction in mortality by giving tranexamic acid. So this is something new you can expect a question on this they realize you can give injection tranexamic acid to reduce mortality and in whom are you supposed to give? You are supposed to give this in a patient who is systolic blood pressure is less than 110, whose pulse rate is more than 110 per minute within the first three hours of trauma. So the first dose has to be given within the first three hours. You are supposed to give injection tranexamic acid 1 gram in the first 10 minutes and then 1 gram eight hourly as and when needed all right but this has to be given in the first three hours preferentially in these patients with deranged vital parameters so this is about circulation once you do this the circulation then the vital should start stabilizing the pulse rate should start coming below 110 the systolic blood pressure should stabilize there is a concept called 
permissive hypotension which also is a part of damage control surgery but essentially these are the main pillars of primary survey that is airway breathing and circulation all the important questions on these topics are going to come from these Thank you.